Welcome everybody to the Block O Show, presented by Barrio Taco. I am Frank Saldana, alongside Tyler Danberg, as we are previewing uh, Saturday's game against Michigan State for Ohio State men's basketball. Now, Tyler, Ohio State started off strong uh, when the season first started. They were 10-3, and and then about the new year hit, and that's when everything went downhill. They started losing games when Big Ten play started, uh, and... People say that the uh, Big Ten isn't really a strong conference in basketball, but with the amount of teams that are about to enter the tournament, how many are ranked, uh, you can see how strong the Big Ten is. So, But Ohio State, known for being a football school, but had a strong basketball program starting off. They're ranked 13th in the Big Ten, second to last, 5-14 and 14 over a uh, conference record. Uh, and... The last time they faced Michigan State was here at the shot in Columbus, Ohio. Now, Michigan State's a, a pretty solid team with an 18 and 11 overall record, 10 and 8 uh, conference record, so a bit over 500. They're 11 and 2 at home, and Ohio State is 1 and 9 away. So, how do you think Ohio State can handle being away for the last game of the regular season? Well, Frank, this is going to be a game where they just have to tune out the Breslin Center. It's going to be rocking. It's going to be dressed in all white. The Izone is going to be around the lower bowl from end to end because the student section, they get to sit all around the arena. So it's, like you said, home court advantage in its senior day for Michigan State. They're going to have five seniors being honored, including Joey Hauser and Tyson Walker, two of their leading scorers. So Ohio State, they're going to have to limit their turnovers. They're averaging about 11 per ball game. They're going to have to make sure that they limit those turnovers. And a guy that's going to be a crucial focus in this game is going to be freshman point guard Bruce Thornton. Bruce Thornton. Very solid guy. He's really been stepping up these few games. You didn't really hear about him much to begin with, but as Ohio State just kept on going that losing streak, I feel like Bruce Thornton, the way he stepped up on Sunday against Illinois and how it just translated over onto last night's game against Maryland, Bruce Thornton has really stepped up, and I am very excited for what he has this uh, upcoming upcoming few years. Uh, now, Tyler, can you uh, talk more about Bruce Thornton and how, how he managed against Michigan State and how to step up? Well, he is the guy who runs the point. The offense runs through Bruce Thornton at this point. Him and Ice Likely, the grad transfer from Oklahoma State, they have been manning a lot of those point guarding duties. And Thornton, over his last eight games, he's averaging 13 points per contest, and he's shooting 58% from the field. He had the 20 points in the win on Sunday against Illinois, and then the win Wednesday night against Maryland. He had 10 points and four assists. So he's really able to do a lot of different things, and he's been playing his best basketball as of late. He was saying that in January when Ohio State was in the middle of that losing streak. They won against Iowa January 24th but lost pretty much every game in January outside of that. Thornton said that he was really struggling but then picked things up in the month of February and really hasn't looked back. Very solid guy. Now, uh, as for Michigan State, Joey Hauser, the grad uh, forward, had 22 points against Ohio State. He was 18 for 13 from the field goals, and 6 for 9 from the three-pointer. It was definitely their leading scorer that game. It was definitely the one who made the biggest impact against Ohio State. Do you think that will happen again uh, this Saturday, or how will Ohio State combat that? Without a doubt. As we talked about before, it's going to be senior day for Joey Hauser. He's played five years of college basketball, four as a Spartan at Michigan State after one at Marquette. So there's definitely going to be an emphasis on getting Joey Hauser the basketball. He's 15th in the league in scoring. He's off to the best year of his five-year career. He's really exploded. He has played in 10 games this year where he's been the leading scorer and he's coming off a 20-point performance against Nebraska. And in that game against Ohio State, you mentioned it. He just couldn't miss, especially from beyond on the arc. For his size, he stands at 6'9", and he can play that middle of the lineup three or four position. So he's got length, but he's just as good of an outside shooter, which makes it tough for an opposing team like Ohio State to defend. 
Very true, very true. As for as we're on the topic of leading scorers, last time Ohio State played Michigan State, their leading scorer was Sean McNeil with ten points, it was four for thirteen from field goals, and six of those points came from three uh, from three point attempts. Obviously, this isn't really acceptable for Ohio State basketball. You need need guys to step up more. Ten points and being the only guy with double digit scores, uh, Ohio State needs to find. That guy and Sean McNeil can can be that guy, but like you said, Bruce Doran and then we also have freshman Bryce Sensabaugh, who they're they're really uh good for Ohio State, but they just weren't on point that game. So who do you think Ohio State will? Who do you think the player will step up the most this Saturday? I think it's going to be Bryce Sensabaugh. He had eight points in that game against Michigan State, and every single game since then, he's been in double figures. So he has scored at least 10 points in his last five games. He's the team's leader in scoring. He's eighth in the conference in points per game as a freshman. You can't talk about this season for Ohio State without mentioning Bryce Sensabaugh. He's been one of the leaders. He's played in every single game. He has started in over half of those games, especially in the second half of the season. He's just such a crucial scorer. And even though things haven't gone the way Ohio State had planned so far this season, they cannot be mentioning the success of this season without mentioning Bryce Sensabaugh, and he's just been so crucial, and they're going to need him to step up big time if they're going to try and take a win and steal it in the regular season finale in East Lansing. Bryce Sensabaugh will definitely make an impact. Off topic a bit, but Tyler, I just want to make this a bit more fun. Uh, Do you think Bryce Sensabaugh will go to the draft this year? I don't know. I'm kind of torn on it. I think (laughs) I'm of the belief that If he stays another year, I think he can play himself into being a top three, top five pick in the NBA draft. There's no doubt about it. There's upside and positives to both, but I believe that if he stays another year, he can really do something even more special than he has done this year. Definitely. I I agree. Bryce Sensabaugh should stay another year, and it'll definitely boost up his draft stock. Now, going back, last time we played, uh, last time Ohio State played Michigan State, uh, you know, my thing about basketball is rebounds wins you games. Rebounds are a huge part of the games. Now, while the the team stats may say that uh, MSU only had uh, nine more rebounds against Ohio State, uh, if you look at uh, offensive and defensive rebounds, there's a huge difference. Now, Ohio State and Michigan State are very similar. Ohio State has 14 offensive rebounds, and Michigan State has 12. But if you look at defensive rebounds, Ohio State had 13, while Michigan State had 30 defensive rebounds. And that definitely plays a huge part in the game of basketball and giving your team opportunities. So, Tyler, how do you think Ohio State will step up in the rebound battles? Because that's definitely a huge part of basketball. Well, they're down in size. We know that because no Zed Key. He's out for the season undergoing shoulder surgery. So that means that Felix Akpara, the 6'11 freshman, he's going to have an added emphasis. I think he's going to be a crucial guy to try and win that rebounding battle that Chris Holtman, head coach of Ohio State, likes to talk about and makes a big emphasis on each game, winning that rebounding battle. And Felix Akpara is going to be a guy that needs to step up. And you mentioned those defensive rebounds. Those are crucial, especially especially for a team like Michigan State that likes to play fast under head coach Tom Izzo. So they get those defensive rebounds, they quickly work it up in transition, and then they create points off those defensive rebounds. So if you're Ohio State, you can't have too much separation, whether that's being out-rebounded on the offensive glass or on the defensive side as well. Definitely. And now, as for the last game, Ohio State's been struggling just to finish putting that ball in. They went 17 for 60 in field goals and 6 for 29 from three-point attempts. While three points uh, is better than two points, I I personally believe that uh, it's better to work the ball around, definitely try to get those easy buckets, but just finishing. And this is where rebounds play in. you got to get the rebounds. Can't let the other team uh, get the ball away from you. Now, how do you believe that Ohio State will – work that magic and 
put the ball in the hoop finally. Well, I think, Frank, it comes down to ball movement and spreading out the scoring. They did that very well Wednesday night against Maryland. They had six players in double figures for the first time since the 2020 season in a Big Ten game. They had not had six players score at least 10 points each in a conference game since the 2020 season. So spreading out the scoring is going to be crucial for Ohio State in this game to put the ball in the cup and just get a lot of different looks, whether that's working it inside or whether that's going to the perimeter. They're going to need to get a lot of help from various different players to try and get this win against the Spartans. Yeah, uh, they definitely stepped it up against Illinois and Maryland. Uh, Now, uh, you mentioned earlier about Felix Okpara. He's stepping up. He's playing that starting center now. Now that Zed Key's out. And uh, he had a rocky start. Didn't get as much minutes because, of course, Zed Key was there. Uh, Why do you think he's stepping up now uh, compared to Right uh, earlier in the season while Zed Key was there. Because, Frank, I would say he's playing more minutes. He's getting more comfortable. He's getting more experience. He's playing against some of the best big men in college basketball because the Big Ten is a big man's conference. So he's going toe-to-toe with some of the best upper six-footers and seven-footers in basketball, and he's just playing more. And there's something about it when you just get the chance to be in the lineup more and to play more consistent minutes that you ultimately get better. And that's what Felix Akpara is doing. He had a career-high 12 points and 12 rebounds against the Terrapins on Wednesday night. So we're seeing him start to really transform into what could be a dominant big man, especially protecting the rim. He's... Top 10 of the conference in blocks, so we know what he can do as a rim protector. Now he's starting to really develop as a scorer and as a rebounder as well. Definitely. Uh, 6'11", freshman, very excited to see what he offers these next few years. Just the more reps he gets in, I also believe that the more repetitions you have, the better the better you become, just more reps. Uh, That's what it's all about. Getting the repetitions because the best way to learn sometimes is by doing. And Felix Akpara starting the last three games replacing Zed Key, that does wonders for his development as a first year. So, one thing Ohio Ohio State has been struggling with, getting that lead in the beginning of the game. uh, When you look at Illinois and Maryland, Ohio State really stepped up at the beginning of the game instead of playing catch-up. Uh, last night against Maryland, uh, they were down 4-2, to two, but then they had a 12-0 run. So what what are some ways that Ohio State can get that lead in the beginning and not have to play catch-up like they've done these past few months? It starts with forcing turnovers because that's been the – common theme that we've seen when Ohio State's jumped out to some early leads is causing turnovers and getting points off those turnovers. I go back to that Purdue game a couple weeks back two Sundays ago. They got out to an 8-2 to two lead. They didn't lead the rest of the game because Purdue, they went on that quick run and they didn't look back. But what the Buckeyes did so well is that they forced steals. They barely allowed Purdue to get over half court And they just kept applying that man-to-man pressure. And I think that's what stood out, especially against Illinois and against Maryland as well. They just forced turnovers early, and they were able to dictate the pace on their own terms. And that's what it comes down to. Can they get steals? Can they get blocks? Can they get defensive stops? And then on the other end, can Ohio State score? And they've been able to do that, especially the last two games, and open up on those early runs. Yeah, uh, definitely defense is a huge part. Defense wins championships, like they always say. Now, Ohio State was more disciplined against uh, Michigan State the last time they played. They only had seven fouls compared to Michigan's 12. Now, fouls are are key to the game. You try to draw in fouls. What, like, 
What are ways that Ohio State can draw in more fouls from Michigan State this Saturday? We'll go to the free throw line, and they're going to have to attack the basket because we've seen what Ohio State's done the last two games, and we keep harping on it because they've been able to break this nine-game losing streak and win their last two. First time they've done that since December, and they've shot and made 29 of 30 free throws over the last two contests. So they need to keep attacking the basket and keep going after Michigan State's forwards underneath the hoop so they can get to the free throw line because we've seen that that's been a major key to victory over the last two matchups. Yeah. Now, head coach Chris Holtman has been talking about patience. Just waited out patience. Uh, we started off hot. Ohio State started off hot. Then it slowed down. The losing streak came, and Chris Holman has faced a ton of criticism from fans, the media. Now, he says patience. You got to wait it off. You see, we uh, Ohio State has a bunch of freshmen that are just getting new to the game of college basketball. And now, Ohio State has been starting to pick up. These past two games were phenomenal. Uh, Illinois, I believe, three or four of the starting lineup were freshmen. How do you see Ohio State uh, picking up this Saturday, going into the Big Ten tournament, and next season? Well, I I think it just continues with development, Frank, because we're just seeing these freshmen start to really come alive before our eyes. And, of course, Ohio State right now, they are way out of tournament contention for the NCAA tournament. It comes down to can they win out, and it's a tall order. I mean, it's a tough thing to do. I go back to that Georgetown team under Patrick Ewing two years ago. They were the lowest seed in the Big East tournament. They had to win out to make the Big East tournament championship. Then if they won that game, then they would go to the NCAA tournament. That was their only hope, and they were able to do so. And I'm not saying Ohio State is going to do that because, I mean, that's a a once-in-a-generation type of thing. But I think these freshmen... They kind of control their own destiny here, and I think it comes down to a lot of different players on Ohio State, but I would have to say development is going to be the key for Ohio State's success coming in this regular season finale, then going into the Big Ten tournament, because in order for them to kind of stay the course and to keep on going and extend this win streak, it comes down to a lot of the underclassmen performances. Yeah. A uh, little joke I've been saying to my friends, my coworkers, my boss, since I work the video board at Ohio State games. And little joke I say is that Ohio State, since they won again on Sunday against Illinois and they won Wednesday last night against Maryland, they're going to win Saturday and then eventually win the whole Big Ten tournament and get that automatic bid. And that's definitely a possibility, like you said. It all depends on the freshmen. Like you said, controlling their own destiny. And momentum is a huge part uh, when it comes to towards the end of the regular season of basketball, going into your conference tournament. And then it plays a huge part in March Madness. You see momentum, and we got uh, Ohio State's got a roller on Saturday. And Tyra, can you uh, emphasize on like, momentum and what it means to Ohio State right it's now? It's so crucial. This is March. We've made it. <laughs> We've made it. This is March. And momentum is the name of the game. Any team can get hot at any time. And I think Michigan State is a great example of that. Tom Izzo, the legendary head coach, this is his 28th year. He has made a name for himself making deep tournament runs in March. They call him Mr. March for a reason. Regardless of whether they're a one seed or an eight seed, they've only won one national championship under Izzo back in 2000, but they've been able to make various Final Fours. They made eight Final Fours under Izzo, mainly because they can get hot. Ohio State, they've made some deep Big Ten tournament runs over the last couple of decades because they get hot in March. So momentum is what it all comes down to in this month because we saw it last year with a team like St. Peter's. Anything can happen. Anybody can go far. So this is just one of those instances where we just sit back, we call the action, and we enjoy what can be a crazy next 30 days in college basketball. I just like to coin the saying, momentum march. I love love seeing these Cinderella stories, like you mentioned, St. Peter's, Oral Roberts, but 
I want to firstly go back to 2006, I believe, when my uh, my local college, George Mason, went on that Final Four run, and that's where you can see they actually beat out number two Ohio State that year, uh, and rode it all all the way to the Final Four, and that's what I'm hoping for Ohio State to get that momentum. We won Sunday. Ohio State won Sunday. They won Wednesday against Maryland. Now they just got a win on Saturday against Michigan State, right at the Big Ten tournament, and that's where the momentum builds. It snowballs. It snowballs all the way to the NCAA tournament. While it's a stretch, it definitely could happen. Now, Tyler, what are some final takeaways uh, that you, we can see on Saturday? Well, let's look at Ohio State first, and I think it's going to be defending the three. Michigan State they are eighth in the entire country in three-point shooting percentage. And we talked about the perimeter presence of Joey Hauser. Tyson Walker is a flamethrower. He can light it up from deep. So it comes down to defending the outsides, playing tight defense, and limiting Michigan State to below average three-point shooting is going to be a key to victory. And then for the Spartans, it's going to be to distribute because that's one thing that Tom Izzo's teams always do well is pass the rock, dish it out. A.J. Hogart is a guy that comes to mind. He's second in the conference in assists with 5.8 per ball game. He's coming up 14 assists in the Spartans' win against Nebraska. That is tied for third most in a game in Michigan State history, tied with a guy named Irvin Magic Johnson. Ever heard of him? So, you know, they're going to need to distribute and try and create shot looks to get Ohio State off balance, but not bad history to join when you're in the record books alongside Magic Johnson. Yep. And that's it for the Block O Show. I'm Frank Saldana alongside Tyler Danberg. We look forward to calling Saturday's game against Michigan State up in East Lansing on SGSR. Thank you for listening. That episode of the Blocko Show was presented by Barrio Tacos, now open right in the heart of the Ohio State campus at 15th and High Streets. Barrio is serving tacos and margaritas late night each night and has an incredible happy hour with half-off margs and dollar-off tacos weekdays from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Don't forget... Barrio now accepts Buck ID and is offering to go and DoorDash. You can also catch Barrio Tacos inside the horseshoe during the fall and all year long at their taco truck Mondays to Fridays, parked right outside the RPAC on the Ohio State campus. We will be live at the Breslin Center in East Lansing, Michigan for Ohio State and Michigan State tip-off at noon, and we will have the pregame coverage beginning at 11.45 a.m. Eastern Time. Big weekend of coverage on Scarlet and Gray Sports Radio. You can find that game exclusively on SGSR TV on YouTube. But for now, for Frank Saldana, I'm Tyler Danberg signing off. We'll talk to you soon on Scarlet and Gray Sports Radio.